pancreatic fat, how to prevent it, how to improve, best and worst foods for a fatty pancreas, what about fat buildup called pancreatic steatosis. You've surely heard of fatty liver disease. Now there's a rise in pancreatic fat diagnoses where fat infiltrates the pancreas. Why is this a problem? This fat can inflame the pancreas, even causing pancreatitis. If not addressed, it can lead to fibrosis, scarring with no function. Pancreatic fat can cause various metabolic issues. So, have you heard this term before? It's quite new. It's becoming more well-known now. There's little to no medical content on this topic. As an endocrinologist, I'll address this issue. I'm getting more comments asking about this. Unlike liver fat, there's no protocol for pancreatic fat, so research took longer. Now you know the consequences. Let's discuss the pancreas's function. The pancreas has two main functional groups. First is the endocrine pancreas for hormone production. The pancreas regulates and produces our insulin. Beta cells in the pancreas produce insulin. What does insulin do? It moves blood sugar into tissues and muscles. The pancreas is vital for survival. Another hormone in this group is glucagon. Glucagon is crucial too as it functions to raise blood sugar levels. When fasting, the liver produces sugar and the pancreas helps regulate this by increasing glucagon production. In the morning when you're fasting, the pancreas boosts glucagon production. For those with very low blood sugar, the pancreas increases glucagon to help you survive. In fact, glucagon hormone is a medication for severe hypoglycemia as it helps reverse low blood sugar. That's a brief overview of the endocrine pancreas. The other group is the exocrine pancreas, another major function. It produces pancreatic enzymes that aid in digestion. So, the pancreas is also essential for food digestion. Without these enzymes, you can't absorb many nutrients or digest food properly. What are the symptoms of a poorly functioning pancreas? Initially, with mild fat buildup, like in the liver, there may be no specific symptoms. As pancreatic function declines, like reduced insulin production, blood sugar levels may rise. You might experience uncontrolled blood sugar and symptoms of pancreatic inflammation. As you've seen, fat in the pancreas can cause inflammation. Upper abdominal pain behind the lower stomach can occur in the epigastric region radiating to the back. Other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, reduced appetite, and even weight loss. Fatigue can also indicate that the pancreas isn't functioning well. Advanced pancreatic dysfunction may cause poor nutrient absorption, fatty stools, steatorrhea, and jaundice due to blocked ducts raising bilirubin levels. Yellow eyes, yellowing skin, and itching are signs that the pancreas isn't functioning properly. How can we care for the pancreas? How can you reverse pancreatic fat buildup or fatty pancreas? Share if you've heard of this and if you knew the term before. All right, let's dive into the 10 steps. Step one is introducing fruits, into your diet and routine, especially those with a low glycemic index. What's the glycemic index? It's how much of food, in this case fruit, will raise your blood sugar. After eating and digesting fruit, how much will it increase your blood glucose? The lower, the better. Also pay attention to the sugar content in each fruit, known as the glycemic load. So, choose fruits with both a low glycemic load and a low glycemic index. Many fruits are great for pancreas health, like plums, berries, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, oranges, apples, peaches, and guava. There are numerous suitable fruits. Passion fruit is another good example. Avocado is beneficial too. It's low carb with a low glycemic index. Just be aware that avocados are high in calories. We'll also see that total calories matter too. So if you love avocado, watch your portion size. Eating the same amount of strawberries has fewer calories than avocado. Another calorie-dense fruit to be careful with is coconut. So coconut also needs more attention. Other fruits like bananas have higher glycemic index and carbs. You'll just need to eat less of these. You can eat more orange with pulp or cherries than banana, but moderation is key. Fruit fructose doesn't harm the pancreas or liver. It's excess fructose that's harmful. So adding fruits to your diet really helps with this issue due to their vitamins, antioxidants, and overall health benefits. The second step is physical exercise. 
We know that fat accumulation doesn't just happen in the pancreas. Most of the time, it's a systemic process. Fat builds up in the belly and other organs before it increases in the pancreas. Often, people get this diagnosis while being tested for something else. Radiologists are now paying more attention to the pancreas as it's a hot topic. Many new tests are now including pancreatic fat diagnosis. That's why there's been a lot of questions about it. Physical activity is crucial for metabolic improvement. Patients with pancreatic fat often have other fat-related issues like high cholesterol, triglycerides, waist size, and blood pressure. These affect the whole body, not just the pancreas. For physical activity, aim for at least 150 minutes weekly spread over three or more days. It can be gym workouts or walking. People often ask if walking's good. It absolutely is. If you can't run, walking is a great alternative. I love running in gym, but cycling or any exercise you enjoy and can do regularly works too. Don't restrict yourself too much. Many people have busy lives or physical limitations like knee pain. Just adapt exercises to what you can do. Physical activity is crucial for reducing and even reversing pancreatic fat. Number three, avoid processed foods. Processed meats are high in sodium and preservatives like nitrates, which have been linked to increased bowel cancer risk. A study found eating processed meats three or more times a week increases this risk, and it's easy to do that. You might have ham, then salami at a meeting. That's already twice. So it really adds up quickly. It's best to avoid these foods and be cautious about your intake. What processed meats should you be cautious about? Well, turkey breast, ham, salami, pepperoni, copa, parma ham, these deli meats and also frozen products in boxes at the supermarket like frozen burgers. It's better to make your own burger at home. It's tastier too. It's cheaper, tastier and healthier. So there's no reason to buy boxed burgers. The same goes for pizza. Yeah, if you're making a pizza, sometimes you need some flexibility. I'm against restrictive diets that aren't sustainable long term. I occasionally enjoy pizza. But I prefer homemade or artisanal pizzas, not boxed ones. They have less sodium and fewer preservatives, okay? So frozen lasagna, for example, the boxed kind, it's best to avoid. Besides preservatives, it's got a really high sodium content. Also, watch out for ingredients like flour. It's not banned, but if you're eating pasta, go for whole wheat, okay? I don't like to scare people with extreme restrictions on flour or bread. It's hard to follow if you love bread. Just be mindful. Don't eat it twice daily, but small amounts are fine. However, try to avoid pre-made foods for your health. Number four is about hydration. It's crucial to stay hydrated, not just for better health and body function, but because our brain often mistakes thirst for hunger. So if you're always hydrated, you'll have better control. Many people are chronically dehydrated, which can manifest in various ways. When I say hydration, I mean water or a low glycemic juice option. I like lemon juice. It's low calorie and you can dilute it a lot. Remember, don't add sugar to lemon juice as it loses its metabolic benefits and low calorie status. So pay attention to your hydration. Number five is foods that can potentially benefit your health. I mentioned what to avoid and I'll discuss more later, but choose healthy foods and drinks too. What are these beneficial foods and drinks with antioxidant potential? Foods like garlic, ginger, onions, broccoli, and omega-3 rich fish can help you. Some seafood like salmon and sardines contain omega-3 and boost metabolism, improving good cholesterol levels. Many people have this systemic issue of reduced good cholesterol or low HDL. Fish can help with this too. Olive oil contains antioxidants. If you're cooking, avoid lard or other oils. Use olive oil instead. Choose olive oil, okay? Coconut oil and lard are high in saturated fats. Olive oil is healthier, especially if you're concerned about pancreatic health. What's the recommended dose of olive oil? Studies show 7ml daily offers cardiovascular benefits, improving cholesterol and lowering heart attack risk. Remember, olive oil is high in calories. That's why I mentioned a 7ml dose. If you like it on salads or for sauteing veggies, don't worry about the smoke point. What's that? When olive oil is heated past a certain point, it can lose its beneficial properties. But that won't happen on your home stove, okay? So when you're sauteing veggies, don't worry about it. Got it? Now let's talk about foods with anti-inflammatory potential. Grapes, for instance, are also healthy. Always eat grapes, right? With the skin on. 
Grape juice isn't great for those with pancreatic fat. It lacks fiber and is sugar heavy. Even without added sugar, the natural sugars for many grapes can cause issues, okay? So whenever possible, avoid it. Same goes if you have diabetes. You can eat grapes with skin and fiber, but avoid juices. Orange juice and especially grape juice are high in carbs and have a higher glycemic load. So what drinks can actually help? We know coffee, three, four cups daily, has anti-inflammatory potential from various compounds, not just caffeine, but also tocopherol, vitamin E, polyphenols. Many studies show coffee's benefits for liver fat. For pancreatic fat, coffee's effect is unclear, but small studies suggest it might help. And remember, coffee without sugar. You can use natural sweeteners like stevia if needed, but always try to drink your coffee unsweetened. Another antioxidant-rich drink is green tea. Studies show green tea has anti-inflammatory properties and could benefit your health. Remember, we're talking about drinking green tea, okay? Don't take green tea capsules. They are banned in many countries for potentially causing fulminant hepatitis, liver inflammation, and damage. So, drink green tea, not capsules. All right, let's not mix these up. Other foods like nuts, almonds, and macadamia also have good fats that can help. Like avocados, they're healthy but calorie dense. Limit your intake. Number six is about vegetables. Veggies are fiber rich and low carb, like cucumber, radish, kale, lettuce, and tomato. I know tomatoes are technically fruit, but we'll count them as veggies here, okay? Because it's often eaten in salads. Onions are beneficial too. So veggies, cauliflower, broccoli, broccoli doesn't harm your thyroid, okay? Human studies have proven this. No need to fear broccoli. As a thyroid expert, I can assure you, eat broccoli freely, it's healthy and boosts metabolism. Spinach can also be helpful. Include these veggies and fruits to reduce pancreatic fat. Number seven is weight loss. Studies show 5% weight loss improves metabolism and health. Notice I mentioned weight percentage. It's not helpful to mention a specific number here, as it can vary greatly depending on your starting weight. Some studies show that a reduction of more than 5% up to 8% could have additional metabolic benefits. It's crucial to remember that for your body, these restrictive diets might actually worsen the process. That's why I always advocate for real lifestyle changes, not just cutting everything out or doing intense fasting. Long term, you won't maintain that, okay? Tip number eight is crucial. Studies show those with pancreatic fat often have vitamin D deficiency. We know that fat in tissues tends to sequester vitamin D, reducing blood levels. So it's very important to get regular checkups to monitor your vitamin D levels. Generally, in this condition, we aim for levels higher than 30, between 30 and 80. There's also an upper limit for vitamin D. Some sources set this upper limit at 100. Vitamin D above 100 could pose health risks like cardiac arrhythmias and kidney stones. So be mindful of the upper limit too. A safe range is 30 to 80, not just for bone health, but for vitamin D's other benefits. Classic function is for bones, non-classic for immunity and metabolism. Those with more body and organ fat need extra attention here. You can't always get enough vitamin D from food and many can't get sun exposure. So, you need to check blood levels to see if you need supplements. It's hard to tell vitamin D deficiency just from signs and symptoms. I know many videos discuss signs of low vitamin D, but you can't know for sure without blood tests. Got it? Number nine, avoid sugary drinks like soda, chocolate milk, even some fruit juices like grape juice, mango juice, apple juice, and pineapple juice. These sugary drinks... Not just added sugar ones, but high carb drinks and sodas plus chocolate milk have extra calories and sugar. So watch out for drinks. Avoid sugary drinks. Number 10 is about avoiding alcoholic beverages. They worsen fat in the liver and pancreas alike. So avoid alcoholic drinks. Some studies suggest that if you're healthy, one drink a day won't harm your pancreas or health. But I prefer to avoid it completely, okay? As for smoking, it's a big no-no. Not just cigarettes, but e-cigs, roll-ups, cigars, 
zero tobacco use as it can increase pancreatic cancer risk. So be very careful with that. Another vitamin crucial for our health is B. Did you know there are signs that might indicate low B12 levels in your blood? I've made a video about this and I suggest you watch it now. Click here to see the video and learn about symptoms, risk groups, dangers and benefits of this vitamin. Take care. See you next time.